set of candidates are running for the BPU from the 1st District and the 3rd District. So we will start out with opening remarks. And we will start with Jeff Bryant, who is the incumbent from the 3rd District. Jeff? Good evening. I want to thank all of you for taking the time to become better educated about your choices in the upcoming election. My name is Jeff Bryan. I'm the BPU board representative for the 3rd District. My wife and I were born and raised in Kansas City, Kansas, and we raised our family in the Turner area. For over 37 years, I've worked for Plastic Packaging, which is a KCK manufacturing plant down in the Muncie area. So my ties to the 3rd District are very strong. I'm honored to represent the citizens of Argentina, Armadale, Rosedale, Turner, Muncie, and Morris. My job in costing has helped me to learn about watching how dollars are spent. And I bring this skill to the BPU. Spending money to ensure that we have safe water and reliable, reliable electricity is necessary. But I want to make sure that we're getting our biggest bang for our buck. The citizens of this city deserve a representative they can reach. I attend a wide range of neighborhood meetings, community gatherings, and other events for the opportunity to meet more of our city's residents. I feel this is a good way to stay connected with the people I serve. By having meaningful conversations, I find out the issues and concerns that need to be addressed at our utility. I believe the BPU is at a critical point and we are laying out the groundwork for the future of our city. There are many projects that need to be completed and it's important that they get across the finish line in budget. I'm asking for your support and your vote on August 6th so I can continue to be a voice for you, the ratepayers of the 3rd District. Thank you. Our next candidate will be Ron Thompson. Good evening, everyone. My name is Laron Thompson. I am a candidate for BPU District 1, and I am excited to be here. I'd like to thank Merle Bland and Business West and those other individuals who helped put this forum together. I grew up in Wyandotte County. I've been here all of my life, except for a few years. I went away and attended college at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia. Today, I'm uh, standing up for our community because I believe it is the right time for us to stand up for the community. We need a voice to represent the common uh, individuals, citizens of Wyandotte County. And I believe that I can be that voice. Our campaign is centered around three ideas. Transparency, community engagement and education, sustainable living and affordability. It's important that we stand up and be voices for those who may not be able to speak for themselves. As I door knock and I knock on individuals' doors and they tell me my BPU, my BP, BPU was cut off for four cents, that I didn't pay four cents, that breaks my heart. And it's, it, it is up to us to be the voice for that community. So today I'm here to, to be that voice, to be the change. Gandhi said you must be the change you wish to see in the world. Today I hope to be that change. And so I'm asking for your vote and for your support on August 6, 2019. Vote Thompson for BPU, District 1. Thank you so much. Okay. Dustin Dye. Hi, I'm Dustin Dye. I'm running for BPU, District 3. I'm a third generation KCK resident, I'm currently raising the fourth generation. I graduated from KU, then I worked in Japan for three years, and then I returned home to KCK. I worked as a fire and medical dispatcher with the KCK Fire Department before going to UMKC where I earned a master's degree in public administration, from which I studied abroad in South Africa in a scholarship. I bring 10 years of uh, public sector experience to the table and a new perspective to the BPU board. I'm running because the BPU slogan is uh, the power of community, which you can see on their website or the newsletter or the boardroom wall. And I see it as the uh, publicly elected boards a role to strengthen the partnership of the community with its publicly owned utility. I see most of Wyandotte's challenges as interrelated. I believe the BPU is in a position to intervene by being a partner in the community and creating jobs for the next generation so high school students don't think they're being prepared for jobs that don't exist. We also need to be forward looking when it comes to renewable energy generation. Climate change will prove to be the defining challenge of the 21st century creating new crises and exacerbating existing crises. The publicly owned utility is positioned to directly act against climate change. I'm ready to go to work on these issues, and that's why I'm asking for your vote on August 6th. Thank you. Ken Snyder. 
Good evening, and thank you folks for having us here. I want to thank the folks here at KCK Community College and Business West for presenting this forum for us. My name is Ken Snyder. I'm a lifelong Kansas City, Kansas resident. Been here all my life, except for the few years I was deployed in the Marine Corps. I'm a veteran of both the Marine Corps and the Air Force. My slogan, my, care, my campaign is, have you had enough? Have you had enough of the secrecy? Have you had enough of the mismanagement? Have you had enough of the privilege? Have you had enough of poor customer service? I don't have any BPU connection or I'm not a career politician. I'm somebody who has been impacted by BPU's decisions. I know what it's like to not be able to wonder whether or not you were going to get that next BPU bill paid. I want to find out exactly why there's so many private meetings for a public utility. When they hire a general manager who has a federal court conviction against him for employment discrimination and that's your best candidate, that tells me something is wrong. I want to go in there, I want to open up this veil of secrecy that surrounds BPU and get to what really matters to the ratepayers. I would really appreciate your opportunity to serve and I hope that you'll think of me on August the 6th. Thank you. Stan Frenzel. Thank you, Merrill, and thank you for having this. I'm Stan Frownful. I run for the third district. Uh, I've been a state rep for the last seven terms. I'm going on my 14th year. I've seen my time there. It's time for me to leave. I've looked at a new challenge, and because of my time there and what I've seen, I think I can help here what's going on. I spent 10 of my 14 years on the utilities committee dealing with everything from whether it's uh, Casey P&L, Westar, the co-ops, and even BPU has been there. Of my 14 years, I spent 10 years on financial institutes, which deals with retirement plans, CAPERS, and same thing we will, we will be dealing with at uh, BPU. I spent 10 years on insurance, which helps me with the knowledge of insurance background, what will be happening with BPU. Last but not least, of, the t of my 10 years on uh, commerce and labor, I've been the ranking member of that, dealing with economic development and our labor issues. I, uh, I'm, I look for my new challenge to come because as, as I leave the Topeka, I think the knowledge I've gotten there and the ability to work across the aisle. We must be able to work with our other members here, other members of BPU and also our, our uh, UG people because remember this, the final say comes from the UG. Our two main things is we develop a budget and we give it to the UG and we pick a general manager. That's the two biggest things we do. We must be able to work and, and uh, be able to speak and communicate with everyone, not only the members here at BPU and the members of the uh, unified government. With that, I would like your vote on August 6th. Thank you. Bob Meyer. Thank you. Hey, good evening. I guess it's all. Uh, I'd like to say uh, I'm Bob Marlin Senior, and uh, it's a blessing to be here. And I feel very fortunate that I come from a family that we've been serving the public, the people, the neighborhood, and the community at large. That's my foundation. I've been blessed to have worked for the Department of Labor for some 35 years. And during that tenure, I was able to visit 45 states in this great country, 45 capitals. I was able to get education and to serve people in my capacity through programs for the action or the people. They represent the board from 25 years of that. So I'm coming from a situation here that I am the most senior elected official in one that county. I've done this board for 28 years. Beautiful 28 years. I worked with over 40 different programs during that children. So I come to say that many of the things I've heard this evening, I feel very fortunate to say that a lot of misinformation. So hopefully tonight, I will be able to diffuse just a little bit of that misinformation that you heard. For example, private years. That's called executive session, folks. You don't discuss contracts, personal matters, and the public. You define a person that sell rights. 
kisebb ezt elmegyek. De ezt nem volt is üvegen. Mi csak a bátor vagy pénz. Túl nem vagy pénz. Your customers be built. So take that rig out of your system. I don't want to hear it no more. So those you're in the board, think about the time only you're talking about customers and that rig pay. That's some kind of figure out in the world out there. You are a customer of the board of your children. And I aim to show the best I can. The record speak for itself. Thank God for the pleasure. Okay. Now we'll turn to the questions from Mary Rupert. And we'll start out with Bob Milan. Mary? Thank you very much. Um, the BPU's electric rates uh, reportedly increased about 4% in 2017 and 4% in 2018. One of the BPU's department officials uh, said at a meeting this year that it was time for another water increase since they hadn't had one since 2013. Do you agree? Is there a need for a rate increase? Why or why not? And what is your position on it? Well, if I heard the, heard the information correctly, let me explain to you, first of all, board members has little or nothing to do with raising rates. Make that very clear. So it take a little time to explain the process of how rates are determined. Number one, before we can have a rate hearing, we have to have what we call a cost of service study. Cost of service study is a combination of engineers, electrical engineers, that come and look at the whole picture of Wandat County from demographics, population, medium income, you name it, to make sure they look at what can be affordable rate increase. That cost of service study is done every three years. The board members have nothing to do with that study, either by professional engineers, more than one company. With that cost of service study, that information then is submitted to the board for their recommendation as what they think the rate pair should be based on those factors. Unfortunately, in my tenure 28 years, they have never been accurate. They've always recommended much more than we approve. For example, if I recall uh, four years ago, they suggested a rate pair is like 18%. That's ridiculous. Because they looked at all the factors, 105 counties in the state of Kansas with the smallest county, all those factors figure into that. We'll make a long story short. Once that's done, then we have what you call hearings. Three rate hearings is mandatory by state law. That includes industry, like Owens Corning, General Motors, and so forth. Commercial, barber shops, beauty shops, barbecue shops, you name it. And residential. All three of those components have input as to what they recommend the rate should be. Those, that consortium with those three bodies, industry, commercial, and residential. Those are the people that tell you what your rate's going to be. Not Bob Mollen, not this board, and no board. Now, once that is given, the public has the opportunity to come to the rate hearing. We have a ministerial law judge. You can hear and hear and hear people. That's part of it. To make a long story short, we have to recommend the board say two things, yes and no. We've always taken the lowest amount possible, and that's the position the board has. Say yes, we agree or disagree. We have never agreed anything more than the board can approve. We have never exceeded no more than 6% in 28 years less. You need to know that that's the truth and nothing but the truth, the whole truth. So keep in mind, the board does not make a decision or raise the old rates day by day. Don't believe that, folks. If anybody tell you that, you're being misinformed. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Stay here. Thank you. Well, uh, I'm a businessman. I have a business. And during the recession, 08, 09, I had to hold prices for a long time because it was tough out there to keep your businesses alive. So sometimes you hold prices. There will come a time when prices need to be raised. And he is right. We don't do that. A rate study does that. Everybody has a rate study. I don't care if the big boys, the little, the little co-ops, they do a rate study before they go out. And if the rate study comes back and says at this time we need to do it, and as 
the commissioner said, take the lowest one possible. But remember this, water is a commodity. Look what's happened out in western Kansas. We need water. And that Carl River, where we pull it out of, isn't getting any deeper. Believe it, even with all the rain, it's getting shallower and shallower. We need to start doing something that will start storing water here longer so we have it available to us. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. When I go to meetings and I hear them approve things that are wasteful, and then I hear them say that there did no comment whatsoever that they're going to make this change, they're going to make that change, they're going to buy this, they're going to change that, they're going to fix this, and then they want to raise rates, that tells me that we're not hearing the whole story. We're not hearing what is being done to hold the line on costs. I went to a meeting where they approved this little fancy logo change. That didn't make your utilities any cheaper, it didn't make your utilities any safer, it didn't make your utilities any more reliable. But they paid for that. You, as a ratepayer, paid for that. A catchy slogan to go with it. They want to talk about all that. They did multiple projects down at the Quindaro plant to convert it to natural gas, to repair the turbine down there, only to close it. That was an expense that now has to be passed on to the ratepayers. So if you want to ask me, do they need a rate increase? I want to know what they've done to keep from having to have a rate increase. And so far, we haven't heard that. Thank you. Justin? There are a lot of considerations that go into whether to raise rates. And I think a board member has to make a responsible decision about the information that's given in front of them. I agree with uh, Senator Haley's uh, proposal that that the BPU um, have some oversight from the Kansas Corporation Commission. Um, I don't think they should be over the BPU, but there should be uh, a neutral third party that can look into decisions regarding rate increases. So that's what I have to say. I think um, you just have to make the responsible decision with the information that you have in front of you. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would uh, agree with Dustin uh, that uh, the KCC uh, should take into consideration all of Kansas and the rates that are paid across the state of Kansas in comparison with Wyandotte County. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we have some of the highest rates in the state. And I think that for our citizens with tax rates where they already are from the state, uh, it makes uh, sustainability difficult for us in Wyandotte County. Uh, it frustrates me when I, when I go and I, and I hear uh, constituents say, well, I had to move in with my grandmother just so I could survive, so we could survive together. Like Dustin said, there's a lot of things that go in uh, to considering whether a rate should be increased or not. I think we need all the cards on the table to look at that and see whether or not that's a viable option or if we could decrease spending in other areas to sustain the budget for the BPU. And so I think we would have to look in detail to see uh, if that is a viable option. Thank you. Chair? Yeah. The actuality is that we have some of the best rates in the region. Uh, we have a rate study uh, done. We also have a survey done against uh, comparable utilities throughout the region. And, and we always rank somewhere around the middle. Um, Remember that in, in KCK, we have a 1,000 miles of water pipes. And east of 635, most of these are 60 to 80 years old. You know, the BPU board charges the staff to maintain and replace this aging infrastructure. And like most other costs, you know, with your car, if you're replacing parts, those materials keep rising in value and, and cost. So the pipes cost more, the valves cost more, all the items cost more to replace. So when a rate study is done, to determine if we are judicially meeting our requirements and maintaining good water supply to our city. Uh, the board, myself, pour over those numbers to make sure that they make sense and that we're not raising the rate any more than possible. When the 4% went through on the rates, it was actually two 4% rates changes that went through in back-to-back -back years. Uh, the staff had actually requested more than that. We went and had them go back redo the numbers and they came back through 
there's a number that has to happen because you you have to have reliability and you have to have good service and that is what we're charged as board members to make sure that the staff at the BPU is maintaining. We will turn to J.D. Rios for his question and we'll start with Jeff Bryan. What ideas do you have to expand the ways for the public to communicate with the utility and for the utility to communicate to the public? You know, a lot of people say there's no transparency, and I don't argue that. One of our biggest problems in Wyandotte County is we don't have a newspaper. The TV stations don't really pay attention to KCK unless it's bad news for the most part. So it's really hard to get a story out. Um, we charge the staff, the BPU, to try to get that story. So there's the, I believe earlier, those that were here saw, we have the community connection that we send out uh, every quarter that, that gives information to the customers and the public. Um, in bills, we do stuffers for the bills, not just for us, but for the unified government when they ask. Most of those get thrown away. The problem is most people don't read them. You know, I, I go to a lot of neighborhood meetings. I go to community events. I try to meet with people and, and pass along information. Uh, recently, I've even started going door to door in, in, in my district, knocking on the door and taking them some of this information that they don't have, you know, on street light outages, how to, re fix, you know, how to repair, uh, report one of those or how to watch for a scam, things like that. Our problem is we don't have good communication avenues in our county, so it's really hard. But as far as openness, all board meetings, all work sessions are open to the public. Executive sessions are closed by law. Uh, they're required for legal reasons, but that's the same with the UG or any other in, in the state level. Uh, the board books, if you come to a meeting, the book is there. It gives you the meeting notes from previous meetings, and it has the financials in there and the financials are public record for our utility. So there's, when people think that there's, there's not transparency, it's, it's really hard to get the information out to the public. You can't send a board book with all the, through the mail. It costs too much money, which we would all have to pay. So that's, that's how we try to communicate. Mm -hmm. I respectfully disagree with uh, Jeff. Uh, transparency uh, is been non-existent for the BPU. Uh, with regard to what we heard earlier, uh, none of you probably knew that there would be a potential water increase of 4%. Uh, and I believe that in this day and age, communication is easy. Uh, every day on social media, I see the Wyandotte Daily post something going on in our community. It's there, it's accessible. Uh, and, and while it may cost to put the book in the mail, it does not cost to upload that document to the website and to have it accessible for the customers of BPU. Uh, and so I think that, number one, I think maybe uh, videoed or live stream meetings is necessary. Uh, that's an idea that I have. Maybe going in the community and hosting a board meeting outside of the BPU would even be another idea that I would share. And so, just so that, you know, the community can be engaged, there are a lot of people who can't attend the meetings for the sake of working multiple jobs just to pay their BPU bill. And so it's important that we offer uh, uh, the opportunity for them to go and review the notes, maybe online, where they don't have to take time off of their job to make it to a meeting and lose money to pay for their bills. It's important that we do what we can as a board to make sure that our uh, ratepayers, customers, however you want to view them, have the ability and accessibility to review all information that the board discusses. Thank you. Dustin? Every month, the BPU sends out a mailer that has a bill in it, and that goes to every one of the ratepayers, or sorry, customers. Um, so anything that's important that will affect the customers can be put right into the bill that everybody gets in the mail, except for those ones who've gone by or gone paperless, but they've opted to get by email, assuming they're checking their email. Um, I think the BPU's current B PR manager is doing a very good job. Um, I think uh, 
the social media presence they have is very good to get the word out. Um, but as I heard at a neighborhood meeting yesterday, not everyone uh, has a computer or uses social media. Um, I think it might be a good idea just to ask how do you prefer to receive your uh, communications from the BPU and cater to what the customers ask for. Thank you. Ken, I know all about the BPU connection. Every month, every time it comes out, I get two copies at the same house because their system doesn't even know that I pay for two properties. They want to talk about communication. They could do a whole lot better. I look at this thing. I've never seen any notes in here about why they had to close the Quindaro plant. I didn't see anything about that. They want to talk about they have open meetings. Why is it that they have a work session in a room where the public really doesn't have any seating? Why is it that they have to have a work session separate from the general meeting? Why is it that customers are only given five minutes per comment in front of the board? And most every time, the board sits there in silence. I know, I dressed them at one time, and they had nobody, the only thing that was told to me was when I had my time, my five minutes was up. That's the only comment that they made. I actually had a board member come up to me one time at a meeting and ask me why I came to these meetings. Mm. He's now the mayor, by the way. <laughs> so they say they talk communication, they talk about it's, it's easy to get communication or it's, uh, you know, they have a, a, all these open things. With all of the technology that's at their disposal, why don't they have them live streamed? Because BPU is, in fact, a political subdivision of the unified government, why aren't there meetings on the unified government's TV channel? Communication, communication, communication. As a non-commissioned officer in both the Marine Corps and the Air Force, that was the one thing that I was in charge of often. Clear, concise, constant communication. I don't think the ratepayers would be the ratepayers, the customers, whatever you want to call them, would have nearly as much a problem in understanding a rate increase if it was explained to them. Stan? Right. Thank you. <clears throat> as far as communicating with the uh, public, I think the way to do it is you go out to the meetings, as I've done in our, late, our local neighborhood meetings. But when you're out there, there might be 20 people at the most. You can't hit everyone. I've got four different areas that I communicate with uh, from a state level. And when I go to these, there's 20 people each. There's far cry more than that in my community. Now I understand that, and I think it's a good idea, maybe it is putting it on the air like they do the commissioners, UG, have us on, on TV. And so everybody can watch. That'll give us a little bit more. I have this phone here. I just got it three years ago. I used to have a flip top. <laughs> when you're talking about coming into the 22nd century or 21st, I got news for you. They've been dragging and screaming the whole way there. I have a computer that I use for a, a boat weight, basically. I do not get on a computer, and I really don't like communicating on the internet like here. I prefer a telephone or fit, preferably face to face. I'd rather go one on one with someone all day long as that. I have no idea how to communicate better unless people want to communicate. People that want to communicate will come. Then there are going to be those that just want to sit back and just bitch. They're not going to, they're not going to get involved. They just want to complain. So you're always going to have those. So there's going to be a fine line there with that. But I think uh, other than the idea of putting us on uh, line on TV, I believe they've done a pretty good job of putting it out there right now. Bob? I don't think I'm really clear on the question, but I think it has something to do with communication. You want to read the question again? Sure. What ideas do you have to expand the ways for the public to communicate with the utility and for the utility to communicate? Oh, thank you. Well, first of all, I would love to see some of my members at the BPU board meeting at 540 Minnesota Avenue, 66101. I haven't seen them at the meeting, so one way is be involved. Sometimes you've got the opportunity, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Smith, and Mr. Wilson, whatever your name is, come to be your board meeting. 
and take a picture of me sitting in front. I appreciate that, number one. <laughs> Secondly, the most difficult thing in this United States of America and the world is three words, communication, communication, communication. Am I right about it? So I don't have an answer as to what we can do no more you're doing what we can here. You see the newsletter there? That's one aspect of it. You've got TV that think comes from the email, the Facebook, who you call those people. So I'm saying that I don't have the answer as to what more can you do but just talk, 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 and try to put out your best effort. But I think when you are concerned with the community, at least come to one board meeting before you start running for office. I'd like to see your face. I'd like to know who you are. So folks, please come to board and meet and find out. That goes for the UG also. If I understand that very few members of the public come to the UG meeting, very few for the school board. So we gotta be involved with the community. Communication is a two-way situation, it's just not a one-way street. But while I'm there, I'd like to make a little statement here. A picture is worth a million words. And see this little blue deal here? That's how much the race in be for you is compared across the metropolitan area. A whole lot less because you misinform. And see, be careful what you hear. Make sure you're correct. Here's a utility bill. Wow, it's got many things on here. And I look here, I see that uh, one bill here came out. It costs $26 for water pollution. Well, the power is only $15. My goodness, I heard the power was so high. It looks to me that water pollution costs $26. That's $10 more. I see trash collected $15.40. But the power is only $15. Well, so someone want the power? Yes, it is. It's a little too high. But my point, there's other things that contribute to make the bill be more than it should be. Thank you. Okay. Our next question will come from Mary Rupert, and we'll start with Bob Milan. Thank you. Um, here's a question we asked earlier tonight again, and uh, some residents have told a legislative committee that they were not happy with the level of customer service, and they wanted to bring the BP under the Kansas Corporation Commission to answer questions. Uh, should the BP be placed under the Kansas Corporation? And if your answer is yes, to what extent should the KCC have authority over the BPU, if any? Well, this way? Yes. Oh, I'd say very simply, this is nothing. They have three persons on the FCC. I think the public here with six board members has more sense than three people in Topeka, Kansas. Now let me let you know something. In the state of Kansas, there's 114 public owned utilities. BPU is number one. Throughout the United States, there's 2,008 public utilities. BPU is in the top 100. Matter of fact, it's number 50. So we must be doing something pretty good, folks. In the United States, the BPU is in the top 50 of 2,000 public owned utilities in the United States. We are number one out of 114 in the state of Kansas, which is all this county. So folks, keep in mind, be careful what you ask for. FCC was proposed by uh, 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 Senator Haley here, Senate Bill, I think, with 145. We should have an oversight responsible for somebody else. But we got six people. They should be independent. They're doing a good job. The door is open. You can come in at the first third Wednesday, 6 o'clock, take your business, and walk away. The door is open. Transparency. I think traffic kind of can look through something. If you can't see, you must be Ray Charles. It's open, <laughs> folks. We're transparent. The work session is let the staff tell the board what needs to be done. Make sure we have continuity knowing what needs to be done. Set the stage for increase the budget to hire five different departments. We got to work as a team. The board needs to know from the staff what needs to be done. That's called a work session, folks. My goodness, you can't work without tools. Thank you. Dan? Would you read the question again, please? <laughs> Thank you. God. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, some, res some residents have told a legislative committee that they were not happy with the level of customer service and they wanted to bring the BPU under the Kansas Corporation Commission to answer questions. Should the BPU be placed under the Kansas Corporation Commission? And if your answer is yes, to what extent should the KCC have authority over the BPU, if any? Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, if we go into the KCC, those are publicly traded oper uh, uh, plants, utilities. If you're not a publicly traded utility, you're going to have to get a state to vote on that. You're going to have to get 125 uh, House members and 40 senators to do that. And what he just said, with the number of municipalities, co-ops, and that out there, there's only a few publicly traded, it's going to be tough to get that done, especially in western Kansas, where they have a lot of their co-ops. The, the Farm Bureau and that out there, they're very tight. So that's one thing that will have to be done first. As far as going over the KCK, it's basically there for publicly traded money. I mean, what can I say? Uh, as far as the, uh, you were talking about, um, oh, uh, service. I can tell you this right now. I had a house that I wanted to shut the water off in. I called, I got a recording, had another number I called. Then it finally told me I had to go on a computer and do it. I think we need to do something better than that for a lot of us that don't really like use the computer. I had to call uh, somebody in to help me out with that. But uh, I think there could be a better job using customer service in a lot of regards in that way. Now, one thing you must remember, too, that when we're talking to all this, remember one thing, 22% of the population here does not pay for utilities. 22%. So that means the other 78 is paying for it with that. So there's, when you talk about rates and what's going on, remember, 22% right now is not paying for utilities. So that's something to remember when you're talking about rate hikes and things are going on. It has to come, we have to meet a budget, we have to meet that, and you've got to be able to do it somewhere, and when someone doesn't pay for it, someone else has to pick up the slack. So, thank you. Tim Schneider. I don't believe that the KCC is a, uh, an op a viable option, but I did like what Ms. Mulvaney said earlier about the CURB, the Citizens Right Pair Board. I think that would be a far better opportunity. I think another option would be to remove the Ethics Commission appointments from BPU itself and have them appointed by our state senators and representatives and have that as a vehicle that people of the community could reach out to to get their questions answered. Dustin? Uh, the majority of the constituents I've talked to have been in favor of the KCC oversight. Um, so I think if you're just going to listen to what the people want, um, I think that is something that the board should at least consider. I don't think the BPU necessarily needs to be under the KCC, but there should be um, another layer um, that constituents can go to if they don't get a response or if um, they're somehow not satisfied with what the BPU is telling them. So I think they should be able to petition the KCC and um, whatever type of partnership we could have with the KCC, I would, um, I would consider that strongly. I think the question should be rephrased because it's not a matter of what I want. Uh, it's what the people want uh, that should be the focus of that question. Uh, and I just went to the KCC's website and the ability to file a complaint was almost instantaneous. I could push a button, uh, fill out a form and file a complaint. Uh, it's not that easy on the BPU's website. It's not that easy on the Unified Government's website. Uh, I previously mentioned that 22% of uh, people aren't paying bills in Wyandotte County it's frustrating, not just to myself, but to other rate payers, when we have to carry the load of the T-bones. It's frustrating when we have to carry the load of privately owned businesses in public buildings. It's frustrating. And so I do believe that it may be a viable option and something for us to consider with the KCC. Thank you. Jeff? I don't believe it would be a good actually any benefit uh, for Kansas City, Kansas to move the BPU under the KCC rule. You know, the BPU has some of the lowest rates in our region. 
So why do people complain about their bill? Most public utilities are required to collect a pilot fee or offer free utilities to the city that they are in. Nationally, these average between 5 and 7 percent. In Kansas City, we pay 11.9 percent in pilot. And when you add in the non-charge utilities to the unified government properties, this pushes our contribution to around 17 percent. Yes, 17 cents of every dollar of electric or water utility costs that we incur goes straight to our city. I have stressed to the city officials on many occasions that this is too high. Something has to be done to find other avenues of revenue for our city so that they can be less dependent upon the money brought in by the pilot fee through the utility so that the bills are more manageable. Also remember that all the costs that you incur, or we incur as citizens, whether they be the pilot fee, your personal property tax, your community college tax, your school taxes, that's how much it costs us to be citizens of our city. It's important and imperative that every taxing entity keep this in mind when they're setting their rates so that all of us can afford this. The difference between all those and the BPU, what you get from the BPU is actual products. You're getting electricity and you're getting water. So you're purchasing products from the BPU where the rest of them are offering you services. So it's important that we keep a balance on that for everybody. So we'll now move to closing remarks and we'll start Jeff Ryan. As your third district representative, I've worked to make sure the utility is moving in a direction that's in the best interest of the citizens it serves. We've increased our renewable energies to over 45% of our total capacity, which leads municipal utilities in the state of Kansas. I've supported the increased focus on vegetation management, which has resulted in a 50% reduction in outages per year for the past three years. Our new Rosedale substation, when complete, will position the 3rd District for continued growth of business in our entire area. Most importantly, I have and will continue to listen to your concerns and make sure these are brought before the BPU staff to ensure we are setting policies that best serve our city. I'm asking for your support and vote on August 6th so I can continue to be the voice for the ratepayers in the 3rd District. Thank you. Ron? Uh, you've heard a lot of frustration tonight uh, on behalf of the citizens of the county. Uh, you've heard some board members express that there's a lot of misinformation. We suggest that we could do better in communication. It's important that we have someone who will represent the people. It's difficult to make decisions when we are unable to stay woke during board meetings. It's important for us to elect someone who we know will be accessible to our community, accessible to its constituents. As mentioned earlier, the model for uh, the BPU is the power of community. I would suggest that it's time for the community to be in power. It's time for us to stand up, to speak up, and represent those who are disenfranchised, those who work tirelessly to provide a living, not just for themselves, but for their families, to have a successful life in Wyandotte County. We want people to come and live here. We don't want to run them away because of our high utility cost. Thank you, and I appreciate your vote on August the 6th, 2019. Thompson for BPU. Thompson? So in closing, I understand the reluctance to bring the KCC in with the BPU, but I want to reiterate that I'm ready to work to represent the people of Southern KCK by bringing a spirit of transparency and fairness to the board. I work to see that policies are easy to access and, and written in understandable English. Um, I will work to bring back entry-level jobs to the utility, and I'll have a proactive approach in curbing our carbon footprint by investing in renewable energy. My name is Dustin Dye. I'm ready to hit the ground running and ask for your vote on August 6th. Thank you. Yeah. Again, my name is Ken Snyder. 
I know what it's like to be worried about whether or not I'm going to make my next BPU bill payment. For seven and a half years, I had to figure out what was going to happen next. In that time frame, I took six deployments overseas, the Persian Gulf, Afghanistan, Western Pacific, because I knew that was an opportunity for me to go someplace where I could make enough money to keep my utilities on back home for my family. I know what it's like to be out there in that. I know what it's like at BPU. I know that it can be, it's the jewel. Yeah, we can say it's the jewel of, of unified government. And it is. It's time to polish that jewel. It's time to make it shine like it should. A lot more accountability, a lot more transparency, a lot more communication, a whole lot better customer service. I would consider it a privilege to be able to serve this community, and I hope I can ask for your vote on August the 6th. Thank you. Dan? Thank you. Um, it's a couple of things. I think we need to know that BPU, you have, they just mentioned it once, there's $39 million in 2017 went on the pilot program. Nine million went for in-kinds. We cannot continue to sustain that type of money going elsewhere and not reinvest it back in the plant. And itself, to keep it maintained where the cost can stay down. We must start working together. The pilot program needs to be lowered. The in-kind needs to be paid back. Why is that? Because we need to have our new hires, our first level people coming back. We are understaffed right now. There's supposed to be a little over 600, we're under the 600 mark by a good number. We have 800 retirees right now drawn on the pension plan. We have less than 600 employees. You do the numbers. That can't last long. If we want to continue to have a power plant and the utilities here serving our community, we need to do something. As I said, we must be able to work with the commissioners and work on both sides, the unified government and that. So on August 6th, I would ask for your vote for District 3, please. Bob? Thank you very much. Just a few uh, moments to reference where we are. Keep in mind that 85% of the income BPU come from the electric side. 15% come from water. You need to know also that we have the best water treatment plant in the United States of America. We're not number one, we're number two. In Wyandotte County, you should know that. You need to know the Home Serve Program is an initiative that we brought, I brought from California to make sure you could afford your water line from your house to street to be affordable if you sign up for that. I brought that system to the board it's also been adopted by the UG government, or 7,500 citizens taking advantage of that to save money. And we also know that uh, how we generate our power, generation, transmission, distribution. You need to know that if you're a board member. You need to know what you're doing. It's amazing to me how misinformed we don't know what's going on. You talk about energy and so forth, and Renewable, here's a system here. The jury is still out as to the effect of renewable energy. We are at 45% in the state of Kansas. We're less than the state of Kansas. Renewable is the way across America. That's the way America's going to go in terms of utilities in the future. Like it or don't like it. How much it costs and the effect of that, the jury is still out. We'll know that in the future. I'll say that and thank you very much. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Broke it by a mile in August 6th. Amen. Thank you. Let's give all the candidates a hand. <laughs>